Okay, moving on, we're going to talk about subspaces. Subspaces satisfy these two properties. First of all, the, a subspace S is a vector space over the field F. And for a given vector space, a S is a subspace if it is contained within the vector space. So it's a S is a subspace of V. And here I call it S. It doesn't have to be called S. It could be called M or N or whatever. Um, but that's as a set, that set is contained within the vector space. So S must be a vector space on its own, and it must be contained within an, another vector space. So in which case, S then is a subspace of S, of V. Alternately, you can say it this way. If V is in S, then V must be in the, the vector space. And for any scalar in the, in the field and vector in the subspace, then we have, we have this property that the product is in the vector space. That is, it's closed under scalar multiplication. And also, if you have two vectors in the, in the subspace, those, the sum of those two vectors is also in the subspace. So the, the set is closed under addition. So if it satisfies these three properties, then it is a subspace of the vector space. So this is another way, this is a way of proving more explicitly these two properties. Okay, so that's a subspace. So by way of example, in three-dimensional space, the xy plane is a subspace of the 3D space. If you just look at the x dimension itself, it is also a subspace of the 3D space. If you have x, y, z, that is a, even though it looks like it's three dimensions, even though it looks like uh, a, a full space, it's actually a subspace of 60 space. So 60 space is where you have x, y, z is, is the position of an object. And then you may have also um, roll, pitch, and yaw. Okay, roll, pitch, and yaw are the angles, the orientation of that object. So XYZ plane is, is actually a subspace of 60 space. So here I say plane, it's actually called a hyperplane, that it's it's not just a, a flat thing, but it is kind of flat. If you, it, it's flat, in six dimensions it's flat, but in three dimensions it's obviously not flat. So those are some example subspaces. Here are some subspace property. A vector space is a subset of it, a subspace of itself. The zero element is a subspace of a vec of any vector space. Okay, so this is just the zero element that is a proper subspace of a vector space. If you have two vector two subspaces M and N, if they're subspaces of the vector space, then their intersection is also a subspace of the vector space. Notice that that whenever you intersect two subspaces the zero element is always in that subspace. Okay, so if you ever have uh, a subspace, then its complement is automatically, that is, all of the elements in V not in that subspace, then the complement is not a subspace because zero is in the subspace. And so zero is not in the complement of that subspace. If the intersection of two subspaces has only the zero element in it, then those two subspaces are said to be disjoint. Now, with subspaces, if you have two subspaces, M and N, you can, we can call their direct sum um, the, su the set of all vectors V and W, so that V is an M, W is an N, okay, and, and so the vectors in this sub in this space are the sum of vectors in M and N. So if you think of M being one subspace and N being another subspace, V is a vector in the subspace, W is a vector in this subspace. The sum is another space, okay? And so if M and N are both subspaces of the vector space, then the direct sum is also a subspace. So again, these are just some definitions, and there's a lot of stuff going on behind behind the scenes here. Um, so these are very rich concepts. 
we can, in terms of, so we've been talking about subsets and subsets. So a convex set we're going to talk about, so K is a convex set contained in a vector space. And that is, if V1 and V2 are in this, vec this convex set, and alpha is some number between 0 and 1, then this weighted sum is also in the vector space. I'm sorry, in the, in the convex set. So another way of picturing that a convex set is such that if I take any two points in the set, if I draw a line between those two sets, every point on that line is also in the set. Okay, so for example, here's a, a, space, a set that is convex. Here's a set that is not convex. Okay, so you can see that this portion of the line is not in the set. And so therefore, this set is not convex. Convex set properties. If M and N are both convex sets, then the set alpha M is convex for any scalar alpha. Okay. The, the direct sum of M and N is also a convex set. And if C is any collection of convex sets in the vector space, then this is also convex. This union over all M, all sets M in the collection. So over this, so this is a collection of convex sets in V. So the union of all of that of that collection is also a convex set. You can go through and show that. That's also a convex set. If we have a set T, then for any set T in a li in linear vector space, the convex hull is the smallest set containing T. Smallest convex set containing T. So T is this stuff inside here. The stuff in the purple basically is, is the stuff that's added to T in order to make it convex. Okay, so, so we've now listed some specific properties of, of sets and subspaces.